good afternoon all myself dr abhishek tiwari today i am going to give a talk on uh, metallurgical thermodynamics so i will be covering uh, two chapters thermodynamic foundations and first law of thermodynamics so this is the outline of the presentation uh, first uh, in first chapter i will be discussing about the basic concepts and definitions of thermodynamic systems and uh, thermodynamic variables and thermodynamic processes cycle and uh, equilibrium and uh, reversible and uh, irreversible processes zeroth law of thermodynamics and then i'll discuss the first law of thermodynamics in which i will be explaining about the uh, internal energy enthalpy constant volume and constant pressure processes isothermal and adiabatic processes heat capacity enthalpy of physical transformations and chemical reactions then hess's law and stokes law and applications and thermochemistry so basically <clears throat> what are the basic concepts and definitions of thermodynamic system so first uh, we try to understand what is thermodynamics it is the subject which deals with relation between heat and motion so thermo means heat and dynamics means motion so it is the subject which deals with the relation between heat and motion and development of metallurgical thermodynamics occurs due to application of chemical thermodynamics to the metal and materials which later on known as thermodynamics of materials is just it gives the idea about the feasibility of the process and product and its stability and calculation of heat values so let us consider a reaction a plus b giving you c plus d so initially let's say a plus b is at this level of energy and uh, c plus d is at this level of energy as shown in this figure and uh, so we have plotted free energy versus reaction coordinate and uh, when reaction is occurring from a plus b state to c plus d state there is an intermediate step um, stage or uh, act, uh, in which uh, uh, activation energy is required for a reaction to occur so to understand this let us say you, we have this uh, box and uh, if uh, we consider if we consider if we consider uh, the center of uh, mass of this box as the energy level and uh, so let us say this is the unstable state and uh, this is the most stable state so if uh, the center of mass is here and uh, the intermediate uh, when it moves from here to here the final state in this intermediate state this the center of mass will be higher than the initial center of mass so we can say that uh, Uh, extra energy activation energy is required for this reaction a plus b to form c plus d now what are the definitions uh, required to understand thermodynamics of metallurgical systems so what is system first it is defined as any portion of the universe or quantity of matter that is chosen separately from rest of the universe and closed by a boundary surface now what are the types of the systems depending on various types of various parameters system can be classified as uh, based on different things first is nature of interaction so how it is interacting with the surrounding so first is open system so if heat and mass transfer is possible then it is known as open system if only heat transfer system if, if only heat transfer is possible then it is called 
closed system and if neither heat nor mass transfer is possible then it is called isolated system now depending on the number of components also we can define the system if system consists of only single component then it is called unary component system and if system consists of more than one component then it is called multi component system now depending on the reactiveness also we can define the system if system is chemically reactive then it is called reactive system if system is chemically non reactive then it is called non reactive system now we can define based on phases present in the system we can define whether it is single phase system so we can call it as homogeneous system if there is only single phase present in the system and if there are multiple phase uh, phases present in the system then it is called heterogeneous system so as we can see in this figure this is a system and it is separated by the surrounding uh, from from the surrounding by a boundary and uh, let's say there are two species in the system a and b and so chemical interaction for species a can occur in the surrounding similarly chemical interaction for species b can occur with the surrounding and uh, there could be thermal interaction that means uh, heat transfer is possible between system and surrounding this is the boundary and there could be mechanical interaction also so what is surrounding except the system the rest of the universe is known as surrounding what is the uh, boundary wall so this is the uh, in the figure you can see this is the boundary wall and boundary wall can be of two types one is adiabatic wall and another is diathermic wall what is adiabatic wall if there is no flow of heat energy and matter with the system and surrounding then it is called adiabatic wall if the flow of heat energy occurs but no flow of matter means there is heat transfer but there is no mass transfer then it is called diathermic wall now what are the thermodynamic variables so in metallurgical thermodynamics we will have different uh, thermodynamic parameters or state variables so there are two types one is extensive parameter or extensive variable another is intensive variable or intensive parameter so what do we mean by intensive variable intensive variable when the parameter is independent of mass then it is called intensive so to remember we can say independent means independent intensive means independent of mass and extensive that is dependent of mass so for example extensive variables that are mass area volume length entropy and enthalpy intensive variables which are independent of mass for example density is not dependent of of mass if we increase the volume then it is not it is not going to change if 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 uh, we increase the size then uh, the density is not going to change and uh, specific volume molar volume so these are intensive variables now thermodynamic processes when two or more than two parameters get changed in a system then it is known as thermodynamic process so we can see different type of processes in this slide first is cyclic process so we can see we can see here a to b to c to d to a this is one cycle and it is clockwise so it is uh, doing positive work because uh, work is p delta v so this is going in clockwise direction so it is positive work and uh, if it is going from a to b to c to d to a in anti clockwise manner then it will be doing negative work and it is coming 
from initial state A to final state A. So it is cyclic process. Okay. Now adiabatic process. In adiabatic process, delta Q is zero. So here we have this uh, P versus V diagram and this curve is represented by like this. So these are isotherms and uh, this green line is represented by adiabatic process and the work done under this green line or this process work done under this area under this uh, curve work uh, is uh, represented by integration p delta v or p dv now isothermal process so isothermal process so as we know that uh, pv equal to nrt so t is constant that means uh, pv is constant now on y axis we have uh, p and on x axis we have v so pv is constant so this will be like uh, x y is equal to c square hyperbola so we can see here that uh, it is represented by a hyperbolic curve now we have uh, now we have this uh, isobaric process So in this, uh, we have, uh, let's say PV equal to NRT. So isobaric means P is equal to constant. So V is directly, so uh, uh, P is constant. So PV equal to NRT. That means uh, P is constant. So V is uh, directly proportional to T. So here, uh, this P is represented as constant and the area under this curve when the process is occurring from A to B, then area is equal to P into delta V is equal to work. Now isochoric process. So in isochoric process, V is constant. So this is the initial state and this is the final state. And if we supply heat, then uh, there will not be any work done, but this goes from initial state I to final state F. I will discuss uh, the work done in these processes in the later slide. And uh, <clears throat> now quasi-static process. So if this uh, curve is continuous, then it is a quasi-static process. And if it is a discontinuous curve, then it is non-quasi-static process, though it's the same process, but uh, it, is, it is in discontinuous form. So quasi-static process, is the process in which every small step is in equilibrium so that the entire process is in equilibrium and in thermodynamics a quasi-static process is a thermodynamic process that happens slowly enough for the system to remain in internal equilibrium and an example of this is quasi-static compression where the volume of the system changes at a slow rate enough to allow the pressure to remain uniform and constant throughout the system. Now, uh, cycle and equilibrium. So a thermodynamic cycle consists of a linked sequence of thermodynamic process that involve transfer of heat and work into and out of the system while varying pressure, temperature and other state variables within the system and that eventually return the system to its initial state. In the process of passing through a cycle, the working fluid system may convert heat from a warm source into useful work and dispose of the remaining heat to 
a cold sink, thereby acting as a heat engine. Conversely, cycle may be reversed and use the work to move heat from a cold source and transfer it to a warm sink, thereby acting as a heat pump. So you can see that uh, when we are taking a heat from a cold source and moving it to sink that is at a higher temperature, it's, it's, it's uh, not a spontaneous process. There is some work required for uh, this process to occur and uh, that is done by heat pump. So at every point in the cycle, the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium, so the cycle is reversible and its entropy change delta S is zero as the entropy is a state function. A reversible process A thermodynamic process is reversible if the process can return back in such a way that both the system and surrounding return to, to their original state with no other change anywhere else in the universe. It means both system and surrounding are returned to their initial states at the end of the reverse process. So if uh, we are going from 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and 4 to 1, and it's occurring in a reversible manner, then it's called reversible process. So there is an initial process of volume expansion and then restoring again back to the its initial position. A process can only be reversible when there are no dissipative forces in the system and the process occurs in, in an infinitesimally small time. Now, irreversible process. An irreversible process is a thermodynamic process that departs from equilibrium in terms of pressure and volume. It occurs when the pressure of a system changes dramatically and instantaneously that the volume do not have time to reach the equilibrium. So, it's a sudden uh, process. So, a classic example of an irreversible process is allowing a certain volume of gas to release into volume and by releasing the pressure on a sample and allowing it to occupy a larger space, the system and the surrounding are not in equilibrium during expansion process. So as we can see here, this is the initial process and this is the restoring process, but it occurs suddenly. You can see that there is sudden expansion of the volume. No question. So, in which of the following process the system and surrounding do not come back to its original state after process is complete? So, it's in the, it's not in the reversible process. It's not in adiabatic process. It's not in quasi-static process. It's in a spontaneous process. So, answer is correct. Answer is a spontaneous process. Now, zero flow of therm thermodynamics. So. Zeroth law of thermodynamics states that if two objects A and C are in thermal equilibrium with, with each other and separately object B and C are also in thermal equilibrium with each other, then object A and B are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. So we can observe that zeroth law in a very common thermometer having mercury in a tube and as the temperature is increased, this mercury expands and since the area of the tube is constant, due to this expansion, the height is increased. Now increase in the height of the mercury level so the changes in temperature basically helps us to measure the temperature. Similarly. Another example of zero flow of thermodynamics is when you have two glass of water. One glass will have hot water, another having cold water. Now we leave them on the table for a few hours. Then the hot water will come to room temperature. Also the cold water will also come to the room temperature. And 
they will be in thermal equilibrium with the temperature of the room after some time. Now, first law of thermodynamics. So, it's very important. It says the change in internal energy of a system is equal to heat added to the system minus work done by the system. So, basically, heat added to the system is utilized in changing its internal energy plus work done. For an infinitesimal change of a state, du is equal to delta q minus delta w. Why we have represented uh, why we have represented uh, u as du and uh, q and w as delta q and delta w? It's because u is a state function and q and w are path functions. So u is uh, represented by initial and final position and not by the path. But q and w they are dependent on the path. So if the initial and final states are same, then integral of an exact differential may or may not be zero, but the integral of an exact differential is always zero. So cyclic integral of delta zero, uh, delta w or de uh, cyclic integral of delta q may or may not be zero. Also, the integration over a cycle for du will be equal to zero as the initial and final state is the same. If no work is done on a thermally isolated closed system, then delta u is equal to zero. And this is one aspect of the law of conservation of energy and can be stated as internal energy of an isolated system remains constant. Now, internal energy, it is defined as the inbuilt energy that is responsible for existence of matter. It depends on the state variables or state parameters, pressure, temperature, volume, and number of moles. It is a state property. And since the state of internal energy is same as the state of dependent parameters, so it is known as single value function. Internal energy is the sum of energy associated with translational motion vibrational motion and electronic configuration. For a cyclic process change in internal energy, delta U is equal to zero as the initial state and final state is zero. Uh, initial state and final state is same. So the change in internal energy is zero. And internal energy is a perfect differential. So UI will be represented as a function of pressure, volume, and temperature. Now enthalpy. Enthalpy is defined as thermodynamic potential, which is represented by letter capital H, and that consists of internal energy U and product of P and V. So H is equal to U plus P V. Now, if we are moving from state one to state two, so at constant pressure, integration delta H from H1 to H2 will be equal to H2 minus S1 is equal to delta Q at constant pressure will be equal to since it is U plus PV. So uh, integration U1 to U2 delta U plus P integration V1 to V2 delta V. Here we can say it's at constant pressure. So P came out of the integral. Okay. So H2 minus H1 is equal to delta QP. Yeah. Delta U from U1 to U2 will be calculated as U2 minus U1 plus P. Integration V1 to V2 delta V will be V2 minus V1. Okay. At constant volume process, integration H1 to H2 delta H will be equal to H2 minus H1 is equal to delta Q at constant volume will be equal to integration u1 to u2 delta u and uh, since uh, it's uh, p delta v so p dv becomes uh, zero at constant volume so h2 minus s1 will be equal to u2 minus u1 
now it is states that the net temperature change throughout the process for isothermal process we are discussing isothermal process so for isothermal process delta t will be equal to zero and for reversible isothermal process when ideal gas is moving from state one to state two then work done delta w will be integration of p dv from v1 to v2 so p we can write nrt by v here n is m m number of moles so mrt by v into dv and dx upon x integration is ln x so here we can write w1 to 2 is equal to mrt ln of v2 by v1 is equal to mrt ln of p1 by p2 here we have changed we using p v equal to nrt equation and uh, the heat transfer involved in the process q1 to 2 will be equal to mrt ln of v2 by v1 is equal to t delta s s2 minus s1 why because the delta s is q upon t so q will be equal to t into delta s now adiabatic process so in adiabatic process delta q equal to 0 and it follows the following equation pv raised to power gamma is equal to constant so when the system is going from state 1 to state 2 then pv raised to power gamma will be equal to p1 v1 raised to power gamma equal to p2 v2 raised to power gamma is equal to constant and from using ideal gas equation pv equal to nrt we can convert this equation to t1 v1 raised to power gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 v2 raised to power gamma minus 1 and it can also be represented as p1 raised to power 1 minus gamma t1 raised to power gamma is equal to p2 raised to power 1 minus gamma t2 raised to power gamma and work done in reversible adiabatic process given by delta w will be equal to p2 v2 minus p1 v1 upon 1 minus gamma this we can calculate in using integration of edu is equal to cv t2 minus t1 now heat capacity heat capacity c is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance by 1 degree and c is equal to q upon delta t if the temperature change is made vanishingly small then c is equal to delta q upon dt the heat capacity at constant volume c is equal to delta q upon dt at constant volume so q can be represented at u plus w so du plus uh, delta w upon dt so at constant uh, volume delta w will be equal to zero so cv can be represented as du upon dt at constant volume and similarly heat capacity at constant pressure so cp is equal to delta q upon dt at constant pressure so this can be represented as du plus pdv plus vdp upon dt at constant pressure and at constant pressure this uh, vdp term will be equal to zero so this can be represented as dh upon dt at constant pressure and cp generally can be represented as at plus vt square plus t raised to power uh, ct raised to power minus one plus d Now enthalpy of physical transformation and chemical reactions. The enthalpy change in a physical or chemical transformation is written as delta H and defined as H product minus H reactants. Because of this formalism, for exothermic reactions, we have delta H to be negative and for endothermic reactions, delta S is positive. So in endothermic delta H, we are providing heat. So delta S is positive and an exothermic heat is releasing so that means delta h is negative now hess law and kirchhoff's law and its application so hess's law states that the total change of heat in a chemical reaction is same irrespective of whether it occurs in a single step or in multiple steps provided that the react reaction must be isothermal or isobaric or isophoric if a process occurs from A to B, then using 
phase's law we can write as enthalpy change throughout the path ab is equal to sum of the enthalpies throughout ac cd or and D, db so so the reaction a to b can occur directly from a to b or it can go through path a to c c to d and d to b so delta h ab can be written as delta h ac plus delta h cd plus delta h db and now the kirchhoff's law that just says that if a system undergoes a change from one state to another state then both internal energy and heat would alter this means that uh, integration of t1 to t2 d delta h is equal to integration t1 to t2 delta cp reaction into dt so delta cp reaction can be written as delta uh, uh, sigma cp product minus sigma cp reaction into dt so this can be represented as delta h2 minus delta h1 is equal to integration c1 to c2 sigma cp product minus sigma cp reactant into dt and delta h2 is equal to delta h1 plus integration sigma integration t1 to t2 sigma cp product minus sigma cp reactant into dt now we will talk about thermochemistry so what is thermochemistry it is the study of the heat effects accompanying chemical reaction and for formation of solution and changes in the state of matter such as melting or vaporization and physical chemical processes now we will discuss some definitions which are important for discussing thermochemistry first is the heat of reaction it is defined as the heat evolved or absorbed when reactants react completely to produce products and it is expressed per mole of reactant or per mole of products now heat of formation it is defined as the heat evolved or absorbed when one mole of compound is formed from its constituent elements and it is expressed per mole of compound it depends on the temperature and heat of formation of a compound out of its constituent element is called standard heat of formation when it is in considered in standard state heat of combustion so heat of combustion of a substance is the enthalpy change when one mole of substance is completely burnt in oxygen so basically if we burn one mole of the substance in oxygen then the heat required for this reaction to occur is known as heat of combustion and when and heat of uh, solution when one substance dissolves in another there will be change in enthalpy and that is known as heat of solution and it depends on concentration of the solution now we will discuss one problem calculate the standard heat of formation of pvo from pv and o2 at 227 degrees centigrade from the following data delta h298 degree for pvo is given to be minus 52.4 kilo calorie per mole and cp of pvo is given to be 10.6 plus 4 into 10 is to minus 3 t kelvin per degree per mole and cp of pv is given to be 5.63 plus 2.33 into 10 is to minus 3 t calorie per degree per mole and cp of o2 is given as 7.16 plus 1 into 10 is to minus 3 t minus 0.4 into 10 is to 5 t raised to minus 2 calorie per degree per mole so we have this reaction pv plus half o2 giving you pvo so this is the heat of formation for pvo at 500 degree uh, 500 
Kelvin. So we will guess 227 plus 273 will be equal to 500 Kelvin. So delta H 500 Kelvin for PVO will be equal to delta H 298 plus integration 298 to 500 delta CP reaction into DT as we have discussed in the previous slide is equal to delta H 298 plus integration of 298 to 500 CP PVO now the CP reaction will be equal to CP products minus CP reactants. So CP PVO minus CP PV minus half of CP O2 into DT. Now we put this equation, uh, put these values from the given uh, relations uh, about CP in terms of uh, temperature. And we find that delta H 500 PVO comes out to be minus 51,900. 98 calorie. Thank you for your attention.